Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to watch this video very closely and tell me two things that you have observed. Watch it again. Potential motorcade to leave Asante Nisana. What have you observed from that clip? For me, I observed two things. The first thing I observed was that William Ruto was actually talking to Oscar Sudi, who was some steps away from him. And Oscar Sudi tried moving closer to him, probably to pay close attention to what he was trying to tell him. That is the first thing I observed from that clip. The second thing I observed from that clip, which almost everybody else observed, is the fact that William Ruto pushed Oscar Sudi away. And you can clearly see from behind, there is Muslim Rebadi who is trying to find his way. And also there is uh, the deputy president, Riyadi Gashagwa. And because in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. In this video, I want to try and reveal to you guys the hidden motive why William Ruto decided to push Oscar Sudi away from him. Because let's face it, in Kenya Kwanzaa government, is there any other individual as close to William Ruto, the president of the Republic of Kenya, than Oscar Sudi. If you ask me, that person does not exist. Oscar Sudi is the closest ally of William Samoy Arap Ruto. And Oscar Sudi was not the first individual to break the protocol. The other day in Naivasha, we saw William Ruto, Rigedi Gashagwa, and the governors. And you could clearly see Gladys Wanga and uh, Anwai Guru walking on the red carpet. Rigedi Gashago was far away. And the fact that it was, it's Ruto who was talking to Oscar Sudi, and then Oscar Sudi came to listen to him, then he pushed him. He wanted to achieve certain objectives by pushing Oscar Sudi. He wanted to achieve certain objectives by pushing Oscar Sudi. I'm saying this because Oscar Sudi is very close to Ruto. And therefore, it was just normal for him to go to Ruto, listen to what Ruto was saying, then probably go back to his rightful position. If you want to know that Oscar Sudi is very close to William Ruto, let me just give you some three cases before we proceed. Number one, when William Ruto was stopped from going to Tanzania by the former president, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, Oscar Sudi and Dindi Nyoro were already waiting for him in Tanzania told us that he has received orders from above for them not to clear the deputy president, that he needed some clearance. We asked from where. No one was able to explain or even uh, tell us from which source we should seek the clearance. We called the, the relevant people in immigration. They told us, Matiani told them. We contacted the minister. He said he's not the one. Even the, 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 the uh, Mweshimiwa Kenywa who is the head of public service. We contacted him because ostensibly they were saying that he needed some clearance from the head of public service. PIA Yakaruka. And for the government to stop William Ruto from going to, to Tanzania, it meant that they were going for a serious mission. Again, there's something which also happened. Immediately, William Ruto was declared the president of the Republic of Kenya. I think before he was sworn in, there was some Kenya Kwanzaa Parliamentary Group Meeting in Naivasha. By that time, William Ruto was just the president-elect. Oscar Sudi used Air Force One. Get me right. Oscar Sudi used Air Force One from Nairobi to Naivasha to attend Kenya Kwanzaa Parliamentary Group Meeting. That move by Oscar Sudi caused serious political storm in the Republic of Kenya. But the message was already home. In fact, Oscar Sudi wanted to show people like Matiangi, who are using that Air Force One, that he's now the one who is using it. There is no way any other member of parliament could have used that Air Force One. I mean, I don't even imagine that it would have rung in their minds that they could use Air Force One. Oscar Sudi did it. So it's very close to William Ruto. You also remember that on the day of William Ruto swearing in, that was after Oscar Sudi had used Air Force One. On the day of William Ruto swearing in, the only member of parliament who was with William Ruto 
in his current residence was none other than Oscar Sudi. The rest of members of parliament were waiting for William Ruto. Uko. Musiti is Kasarani, I don't know. Musiti Kasarani. Yes, I think it must have been Kasarani. I was never keen on uh, on the venue. So Oscar Sudi is very close to William Ruto. In fact, from current residence, Oscar Sudi went to Kasarani. I don't know, I think it must have been Kasarani for the swearing in ceremony. Using the same same convoy William Ruto used. So it means when William Ruto got off uh, his official vehicle, amongst the people who also got out, out of those vehicles was Oscar Sudi. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And just recently, there was some function, I think it must have been a wedding, of uh, William Ruto's brother. And uh, who is who in government went and attended that event. But you could clearly tell that Oscar Sudi is powerful from the way he was directing MPs. From the way he was directing governors on who should talk to William Ruto next. So Oscar Sudi is very powerful around the president and everybody around the president understands that. And therefore it was not out of the ordinary for Oscar Sudi who is close to the president and the president was trying to talk to him and he was far away. It was just normal for him to move closer to the president to listen to the president. But the president stopped him. Which means there was an objective. And that's exactly what I want us to do in this video. But before you do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. But before I dive in, allow me to also take this opportunity to thank the following people for the coffee which they sent to me earlier. Yeah, because it goes a long way in supporting this channel. You can also do the same using the numbers you are seeing on your screen. Today is Saturday and that's the best thing you can do. The best thing you can do for me tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, why do you think William Ruto pushed Oscar Sudi? Just give me your two reasons before listening to what I'm saying. Just spend, uh, I, I know probably typing is a bit long, but just type, you can pause and type, then I read so that we can see whether we are on the same page. Why do you think William Ruto pushed Oscar Sudi? Number one, probably William Ruto was trying to warn Oscar Sudi to differentiate between official functions, like the one they went for, and their friendship. <laughs> if it's a wedding, it's no more. But this was a presidential event. The president was there, the deputy president was there, the prime cabinet secretary was there. Then as much as Oscar Sudi was walking some distance away from the president, if you look at protocol in the real sense, Oscar Sudi ought not to have been anywhere there. Because the governor was there, why was Oscar Sudi somewhere there? So I think he was sending just a message to Oscar Sudi, boss, we are close friends, but please learn to differentiate between official functions and the rest. As much as these guys know you are powerful, because if you are powerful to the, I mean, if, if someone like uh, Oscar Sudi is close and powerful to the president, sometimes they don't even need appointments to go and see the president. They just walk in. But the presidency is an institution. And that, that's exactly what I think Ruto was trying to tell him. So that's number one. Number two, probably, number two, I'm also convinced that William Samaya Ruto, the president of the Republic of Kenya, was trying to avoid a situation where it was going to appear as if Rigabi Gashagwa was being embarrassed. He was trying to avoid that. The truth of the matter is that Rigabi Gashagwa is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. And let's assume Oscar Sudi and Ruto talked because Ruto was leaving the venue and he just talked and went to his car like that. Some of us would have read a lot of things from that. And that's exactly what William Ruto read very fast. That, hey, what am I doing? By allowing this guy close to here, I'm giving this guy's opportunity. I'm exposing my deputy. He's going to be laughed at. It's, it's going to be a laughing stock. So the best thing, Oscar Sudi, wake up, to tongue kwa simu bana. Wewe enda huko, toka. Wewe gadi kuja. Then you could see Oscar Sudi hugging, trying to hug I don't know those who understand protocol, whether that's also supposed to be the case. I'm not so sure. Because I'm always told that when you are next to the president, uh, because of security reasons, you are not even supposed to raise your hands. I don't know. But that's what I've been told. 
and you could see Oscar Sudi moving his hands. <laughs> yeah, so they did. I mean, the president was trying to a situation where Rigeti Gashaga was going to appear as if he was being uh, embarrassed or insubordinated. Number three, which is very, very important, Ruto wanted to avoid a similar situation that happened during his brother's wedding, where at the end of it, everybody concluded that Oscar Sudi was the most powerful individual. You know, William Ruto was, sitting, was standing somewhere there. Then it was Oscar Sudi was telling, wewe, kuja, ongea na chukua da kambili. Okay, wewe. So the thing is, Ruto didn't want a similar situation because he's the president. If a governor wants to speak to him, probably there's a channel to be followed. He can even go to him directly as long as the security allows. And uh, we all know, yeah? <laughs> that's not the situation. The, the situation on the ground is different. Oscar Sudi is the most powerful individual. So he didn't want a situation where it's going to emerge that William Ruto re left Kelvin... Uh, Kiptum's residence or burial, and then he just talked to us with Oscar Sudi, got into his car. That would have portrayed a very bad picture. Would have portrayed Oscar Sudi as a very, very powerful individual. Number four, in my view, you know, in this country, we consume politics. And the current politics is that there is uh, the Kikuyu faction in government. And then there's the Kalenjin faction in government. When Uru Kenyatta was the president, he was at Kikuyu. William Ruto is now Kalenjin. So there's this story that Kenya Kwanza, who are in government, and that government is actually run by the Kikuyu, by the Kalenjins. And that you like Rigadi Gashagwa, Wakutu. And I remember, I, I don't know whether I read it from Pauline Joroga's page, where she was alleging that whatever happened yesterday normally happens, but from the background. When these guys are off camera, and because this was being captured, that's why Ruto had to intervene. The truth is, it would have sent a signal that Isirikali ni yawakikuyu. Isirikali ni yakalengens. And that's what William Ruto did not want to happen. And lastly, Moska Sudi probably is using his closeness to Ruto for his own either personal, economical, or political gains. Like the last time you saw him directing governors, it meant that if any other governor wants to meet Ruto, the right, the, the right person to, to meet is Oscar Sudi. He will just take you there. Yeah? So, Ruto didn't want a situation where it's going to emerge like that, that Oscar Sudi is using his closeness, even in where, I mean, it's, it's not necessary. Yeah? So, I don't know what to think. That's my take. This is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.